Welcome back to my videos about Maxim DL, and uh, here we're going to take on a rather interesting topic of luminance layering, or making color images uh, that are really quite exquisite. Some time ago, well over a decade ago, um, a very interesting and new methodology was introduced to the world of CCD astrophotography called luminance layering technique. And it can be described best as thinking instead of having a RGB composite color image, red, green, and blue, added together to make a picture. Instead, uh, we have red, green, and blue that only add to the color component of the final image. And then you have a fourth image called the luminance layer, which adds to the brightness or the luminance of the image. And it turns out that using this technique, the luminance image uh, can be made from any uh, filtered images that you choose. A lot of people choose a, a clear filter. Some people will use a hydrogen alpha filter if they're doing nebulosity. But there are reasons to use different filters. And the luminance image is the one that contributes the sharpness, the detail, the resolution, and the brightness of each individual pixel to the final image product. So the key here is that when making an LRGB or luminance red, green, blue image, the red, green, and blue images don't have to be very well resolved. They can even be slightly blurry. They don't have to have fantastic sharp focus. They don't have to be awesomely tracked. In fact, they don't even have to have the same binning as the high resolution luminance file because all the color files, L, the RGB files, all they contribute is color information. They don't contribute luminance, they don't contribute sharpness, they don't contribute resolution. So this is a nice feature, actually. They're creating a layer that only offers color information to the pixels, and if the pixel is coded as being black, then no matter what color it is, you won't see it. But if the, the pixel is coded as being very bright at 65,000, for example, 65,000, which is very bright, then whatever color those RGB layers contribute will show up very brightly in that final image. So I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but let's take a look. Here I've got four images open. I've got a group 5 image here, which is going to be my luminance layer. This layer was made out of 18 individual hydrogen alpha images, each 5 minutes long, well tracked, well focused, and uh, cleared of all noise. These things have already been processed for biases and flats and dark frames. And then I have three other images each taken through different narrowband filters, an S2 image, an O3 image, and a an hydrogen alpha image, which will be our blue and our green and our red chrominance images. And these were taken, uh, they were taken through good, uh, a good one by one binning uh, through appropriate filters, and they were tracked pretty well too and well focused, but they don't have to be. They can even be somewhat blurry. As long as we have three color images, we can use those for the color component of the image. Maxim DL is a little bit tricky. Um, if you were not taking your filters, uh, taking images through the filters of uh, HA03, S2, and LUM, L-U-M for being a clear filter, uh, then there's some sneaky stuff we have to do in the background to make this work properly. Um, in this case, all of my group 5 luminance images were taken through hydrogen alpha filter and if we look at the fit setter for that you'll see that the filter here is is labeled as HA hydrogen alpha okay so the filters um, are what the system reads when it does color stacking so we have to do a little bit of finagling here to make sure this comes out properly Let's go to the process menu and say stack You're presented with the familiar stack dialog again in this case, we're going to add images, and we're going to say add all. It's going to take group 5, HA, O3, and S2. We're going to add all and say OK. And it does it, but 
interesting. It has red, green, and blue, but there's no luminance here. Like, what's going on? And that's because it went into the fit setter, and for the red, it says I'm going to apply the H alpha and the group 5, uh, which we don't want. We want the group 5 to be in its own little layer, and we want to call it the luminance layer. So we're going to create a new group here. Just right click on the group 9 object folder here and say new group. And then it's going to it's going to create a group 10 and we're going to rename that. So right click on it, say rename, we're going to call it luminance. And then we're going to grab the group 5 luminance image and we're going to drag it into that new group. And then we're going to drag that group up into group 9 and make it a subgroup. Catch that? That's kind of neat. Um, it's funny that it, it kind of relabels things on you. So we'll have to rename it again. We'll call it Luminance. See the sneaky stuff that's going on here? So now we have four subgroups. We've got a red, a green, a blue, and a Luminance group. But we're not done yet. All we've done is successfully confuse Maxim DL, and hopefully not you. Let's go back up to the group 9. We now need to tell it what this image is going to be. We can set this group. Right click on it, say set group. And we don't want it to be auto because when it's in auto mode it's thinking RGB. We want to change it to LRGB for luminance red, green, blue. You can also see here sign magenta yellow and luminance sign magenta yellow or even two color or individual planes. You can do all sorts of neat color combinations and play with those at your will. But for now we're going to select LRGB. We've now told it that we're making an LRGB image out of these four groups. And if we right click on the red one, it should say red. When we right click on the green one, it should say green. The blue one should obviously say blue. But the luminance one should say L for luminance. And look what it's done. It's done mono. It's like, nope, it's not monochromatic. We're going to make that our luminance image part. There. We've got it all set up. We don't really care about the quality. We want to make sure alignment is set to automatic star matching, which we've been using all along. For color, you would you would insert the correct RGB ratios here. But there's something new here to th think about, the luminance weight. In this case, I'm going to leave it at 100%. That means that the group 5 image will contribute 100% of the luminance values to the final image. You could make that any other percentage you choose. It could be 50% in which case it would only contribute 50% of its luminance values and the remaining S203 and H alpha images would contribute the other 50%. It's up to you. Play it will. I'm going to leave it at 100% because I know this is a sharp and beautiful image and then I'm going to leave this combined method at summing and uh, leave it with a 16-bit fits format and say go and off it goes and it does it and it creates our LRGB image and if we bring up the screen stretch window zoom in a little bit we can take a look at what this LRGB image looks like and it looks pretty good that's actually really kinda neat now you may notice something in here there's actually this kind of uh, fairly bright uh, hot blue pixel that's kinda interesting uh, you may want to go into uh, the image set and find out where that hot pixel is. Obviously uh, it thinks it's a hot blue pixel and if we look at our luminance image here you'll see a uh, you'll see this pixel set right there. You could just fill that in or copy it out or do any number of other things using Photoshop uh, to get rid of that. But in short, we've got ourselves a pretty nice image out of this LRGB set. Now there's a way to do this in Photoshop, where in Photoshop you can create an RGB image out of the uh, respective H Alpha S2 and O3 images that you have. And uh, just send that over from Maxim DL as an RGB image over to Photoshop. And then you can take the luminance image that you create in Photoshop from the 18 H Alpha images, send that over to Photoshop also all as TIFFs, by the way. And then there is a way of layering, uh, create different layers, and you can assign one layer to the chrominance 
RGB values and the other one to luminance. And alignment you'll have to do manually. It's not as difficult as, as it seems, but in Photoshop it can become a little bit tricky if you are binning your chrominance images two by two and your luminance images one by one. Then you're going to have to rescale as well as uh, as well as translating in X and Y and maybe even rotating. So there you have it. LRGB composite coloring uh, done using Maxim DL. It's a very nice feature. Uh, go ahead and play with that and uh, thank you very much for watching.